got? This is a tough one. You know, usually when you say, oh, I want to talk about so-and-so, you know, either half a dozen things immediately spring into my mind or I kind of think about it and then I go away and read a couple of journal articles and you know, find out a bit about the magnetic field of Mars or whatever it is. But Earth is simultaneously, there's too little to say and too much to say in that, you know, obviously there's masses and masses of things you could talk about about the Earth. Um, but actually, you know, most people know about most of them already. But there are several characteristics about Earth that make it unique among the other planets. So among the terrestrial planets, which are Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, Earth happens to be the biggest. It's the most massive. It's the most dense. So it has more stuff smashed into its volume than the other planets. This is the first picture ever taken of the Earth from Mars. So the one of the probes turned around and took a photo of, of the Earth and you can see this tiny speck in the middle and that's the Earth seen from Mars. You know, as an astronomical object, Earth really isn't that spectacular. You know, it's a sort of middle-sized planet in the, somewhere in the middle of the solar system. So from an astronomical point of view, again, apart from the fact that, you know, it's the only place that we know about in life in the, in the universe, there really isn't that much, and that's such a headline item, that there, after that I'm struggling a bit to think of anything interesting to say about the planet that we have to live on. It also has tectonic activity, so the crust, the pieces of the crust are split up into chunks and they move around, which we feel as, as earthquakes. The, the twin of the Earth is Venus, right? It's a planet very, very like the Earth in a lot of ways. Uh, it's very non-conducive to life on Venus because it's you know, way, way hotter, it has this runaway greenhouse effect and so on. But if you were just looking at planets, and comparing them, you would see two fairly cloud-covered, reasonably warm planets with rocky cores and, and magnetic fields in their middle and so on. And if you were really that uninspired by life, there isn't really anything that would make you pick the Earth out as the most spectacular place to visit in the solar system. The interior of Earth we can study a bit because we actually live here, so we can feel how the planet moves around. There's a solid iron core, and then there's a liquid core around that, and then there's a mantle, and then there's the crust on the outside. So when the planet formed from the solar nebula, it was probably mostly molten iron and other chemicals and things built up, and so it stayed liquid, but probably after 10 or 20 million years, the outer crust cooled and solidified, so that's where we got the crust, but the inner part stayed very hot. It's got quite a big moon, hasn't it? That's unusual, yeah, that probably is the single thing that's most different about it. I guess, you know, something in the solar system has to have the biggest moon relative to the size of the planet. And actually, even that's not quite true, because Pluto's moon is pretty big compared to it as well. But, so maybe, you yeah, know, maybe even the moon wouldn't stand out that much as a, you know, a spectacular feature of the Earth, because there's moons all over the solar system. Maybe people would notice that we only have one, you know, most planets have more than one, at least the outer planets do. This is a very famous picture, it's actually tilted, it should be uh, 90 degrees switched. Um, counterclockwise rotated. Um, this is probably the most famous picture of the Earth and I think it's called the most printed picture ever made. This is taken by um, Apollo 8. So this is uh, not from the surface of the Moon but from the orbiter around it. And this is basically an Earth rise. So uh, again I'm struggling to find anything spectacular to say about the Earth other than the fact we're here and that kind of sounds a bit egotistical really. If you were actually flying over Earth and you were looking at it, it would look quite interesting. People call it the, the blue marble. So you see oceans, this deep blue, about 70% of the Earth is covered in oceans. And you also see the white clouds. That's pretty unique to Earth. The water vapor condenses into these clouds and so we get this nice water cycle. And then we've got these land masses. Uh, and you see some brighter parts where it's covered with sand and desert and the green portions where we actually have trees and photosynthesis happening. So this is a pretty unique view of Earth from above. So Earth has seasons, but again, that doesn't really make it stand out in the, in the solar system. In that, you know, most, so what causes the seasons is the fact that the Earth's uh, axis is tilted relative to, to its orbit around, so that sometimes it's leaning towards the sun, sometimes it's leaning away from the sun. Um, but other, other planets do exactly the same thing. So again, there's not, not even seasonal variations is not something that's unique to the Earth. Um, this is a picture where it, which I think is really impressive. Um, because it's, it's taken, I think, from the space station and it's a sunrise behind the Earth. And what you can see is basically, you can see a bit the curvature of the Earth and what you see is the atmosphere being lit by the sun in the background. And you can really see how thin this layer actually is. The atmosphere is only like 100 kilometers thick. I have read some people suggest that how do we know there's not another Earth, another planet exactly the same as ours on the exact opposite side of the Sun 
going around at the same speed so we never see it because it's on the other side of the sun. It's, it's been a popular one. It's been around in science fiction since time immemorial. And, you know, you look on your favourite conspiracy theory website, you'll find out about it. Um, we know there isn't. And, well, part of the reason we know we, there isn't was if, it would be pretty unlikely to actually end up with a planet down there. But now we have much more direct evidence because, we, of course, if you, it's true that if there were a planet exactly around the other side of the, of the sun, following exactly a sort of mirrored orbit, so it kept pace with us, and when the Earth slows down on its orbit, this one slows down as well, and so on, we wouldn't be able to see it. We would, however, be able to detect its gravitational influence on the other planets, just as we can detect the Earth's influence on gravitational influence on the other planets. It's not there. Um, and actually, even more directly than that, of course, yes, sitting on the Earth, we can't see what's on the other side of the sun, but we sent pl plenty of probes out into space now, and they've looked, and there's nothing at all there. There's nothing to see. So there is no mirror Earth on the other side of the sun.